So we're going to look at some creative uses of warp markers. And to get to the clip edit window on any clip, just simply double click. This is the clip edit menu. And when I have my mouse on the field of the audio waveform, I get that little lens. When I click and hold, I can drag up and down and zoom. I can also uh, zoom right to left with a mighty mouse or this small menu down here, I can position myself. So when I zoom all the way back out, all these gray marker verticals are warp markers and Ableton puts them in automatically. So let's double click and activate a couple of them towards yellow and see what kind of extremes we can get out of these markers. I'm going to stretch this one, three. So there you can see they're capable of some very nice rhythmic effects. And let's take a look at a couple of things. The loop, for instance. That's the loop braces, the loop brackets. Here's the loop on-off switch, and there's the position markers. Let's manipulate this loop length. I'm just doing this with the brackets in the top. Now a warp marker on top of that. Ah, I love that. So down here is the transient menu. I have different algorithms here. Each one of them treats the file in a different way. So you need to experiment with these things. Now, Repitch doesn't affect transposition, but Complex does. I can tune my loops with the transpose wheel, and on beats I can tune them. I also have a volume slider. Helpful for some other loops, and let us not forget the reverse button. Oh, that's tough right there, man. Loving it. All right, so warp markers are, to me, very musically rewarding, actually. You might think um, this is a little outside, but it's still a nice way to understand the capabilities of Ableton, which are significant.